In the Cascading Kitchen at Jubilee Farm, we say over and over, food is precious. Food is precious. Our recipes encourage using the tops of many root vegetables, adding the ubiquitous zucchini in unlikely places, cutting around the bruises, and viewing the occasional freeloading bug as a connoisseur of good taste, and using the remainder of one meal as the obvious beginning of the next delectable delight. In short, harvesting the full complement of nutrition and flavor of well-grown food from healthy, clean, and lively soils. As CSA members, we have the opportunity to bypass the artificial divide erected by a food supply chain that throws away 47% of all the fruits and vegetables grown in this country. So, if every now and then a week gets away from you and you lose a few greens, don't worry about it. It's nothing compared to the amount of shrink that goes out the back door of every grocery store, trying to maintain the artificial appearance of unlimited abundance. Welcome to week 16 of the summer of 2020. We are in full production at the farm, as you can imagine, and look what's coming out of the field this week. Some portion of this is going to arrive in your box this week, depending on what size you've chosen. I spent a few minutes just brainstorming possible food ideas for the Irish household for the week, and then I threw in a kid's recipe as well, since Ken and I shouldn't eat that way, but other larger families with growing children can certainly eat this way. One of the casseroles we're going to make is sort of an impromptu invention. We're going to take our veggie tots, which we've taught folks to make at the farm over the years. We'll show you how to do that this week. And I'm going to make them with broccoli. Uh, or you could make them with cauliflower if that's what you find in your box. And you make your veggie tots and you bake them, they're not fried. And then we're going to teach you how to make a sausage gravy. And this comes from our dear friend Livy who was part of the kitchen in the early years. She was from the south and I was making something and she said, Honey, you need some gravy on that. So I'm going to teach you how to make Livy's gravy and we make it out of a uh, maple sausage that we create at home from our hog that we get from Jubilee Farm. We do it ourselves. Um, the recipe for that is even on the website if you're interested in making your own maple sausage when you get your hog back. Um, and then I decided we put some mashed potatoes on the bottom of that casserole because there are potatoes coming out of the field. So we'll have mashed potatoes in the casserole, a layer of the sausage gravy, and then our homemade veggie tots on top and we'll bake that. And that'll feed a tribe, I'm sure. Um, I'm going to take our corn on the cob this week and cook that in a little bit of um, butter with roasted, with these peppers after they're roasted. And I'm just going to stick it in a bowl because I haven't decided if we're going to eat it as a side dish or very likely it may end up in our cornbread this week. Uh, just to fill that out a bit. We've got some more eggplant coming out of the field. And I might cook that with the last of the tomatoes coming out of our garden. And um, we'll see what happens there. I haven't really decided on that. I am going to roast the cauliflower and the beets this week because I want to serve that alongside a galette. And a galette is just a fancy word for a free-form pie dough. Um, so I make a single crust pie dough and I season it with salt and black pepper and usually some smoked paprika. You'll see me use that in the breadcrumbs this morning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cook the beet greens and the chard. Because you guys, they're cousins. They're virtually the same thing. This is just a little heftier. But they are very close cousins. So I'm going to braise the greens to put in the galette. And then alongside it, I'm going to serve roasted beets and roasted cauliflower. And maybe, maybe a little tahini sauce on the side. I haven't decided if that's necessary. But we'll pull the recipe forward if that's of interest to you. We've got onions coming along. And I don't know that these are the onions I'm going to use this week, but I brought my basket. So a lot of you have heard me say over the years, oh, I have a basket on my counter. This is the basket I'm talking about. You'll often see it in the corner. It's piled with miscellaneous stuff. So here's the garlic that we got from the farm a few weeks ago, and I'm just keeping an eye on it. Of course, I've cooked through quite a bit of it already. 
These are those gorgeous shallots. And I cooked one, but I'm stashed the rest because I like to use those in the wintertime, sometimes in a salad dressing or a sauce. And these are the onions we just got. And they still need to cure a bit. And that's why I put them on a basket because air can move underneath. I can keep an eye on them if they need to be used up. Uh, and nothing goes to waste. That's a concern of all of ours. Nothing goes to waste. What else? We've got chard. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it this week. I will go ahead and wash and chiffonade and put it in a bag so it's ready to go because I know the week is not going to allow me to putter much once I get going. Did I miss anything? Oh yes, and another cabbage. Now, I don't have an idea for the cabbage just yet, except I was thinking we just haven't been having our breakfast cabbage slaw very often um, of late, so I think I might make some of that up. Uh, that's just sliced cabbage and lime juice, maybe some kind of onion, uh, and if I've got it, cilantro, and we just let that macerate and keep it in the fridge for three to four to five days, and we just put an egg on top of it. So if not, if you're not in the mood or you're busy, put it in a bag, put it in the back of the refrigerator and pull it out next week. But this Savoy cabbage is great, either cooked or like a salad, like I showed you last week. And of course, carrots. And look at, look at them. They're really great. I think I'm going to hang on to those. We might just munch on those. They're so big. And some of you may have added pears onto your list. We're picking our pear trees. And they're not all going to be perfect. Some of them might have spots on them. Don't despair. The most important thing to know is when you pick a pear, you don't pick it ready to eat. You pick it ripe, but it still needs to allow time for the sugars to develop. So they'll be a little hard and granular if you bite into most of them. Now you might get a few that are pretty close to being ripe. They start to get kind of a yellow kind of color like that on this particular variety. More importantly, you can kind of feel it right up here with your thumb and it starts to get a little soft. That one's ready to be eaten. This one is not. See, that one has maybe another week, maybe just four or five days. If you're really trying to hurry them, you can put them in a paper bag, but I don't recommend that unless you're going to use them all at once. Um, what I thought I would show you, of course, I might just want to back up. If you get one and it has a little blemish on it like that, just cut it out. Uh, and that's the same here. Just cut it out. The whole thing doesn't need to be wasted. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a birthday dinner around here. I know I've shown you lots of dishes that have milk or creamy sauces. We don't generally eat like that. Those are party foods. But we are getting to winter and maybe you're going to have a harvest celebration. And there's a recipe that Ken loves to have for his birthday. He doesn't get it every year. But it's a pear gorgonzola or pear creamy blue cheese sauce that's pretty nummy. Um, and that served alongside roasted beets would be a lovely supper for somebody's celebration. So I will meet you next in the kitchen and we'll get started on making the casserole. See you there. This is why you use salt in your water. Well, so we decided to put the, call, the broccoli back in some salt water because I was getting a little lazy and too quick and didn't do it. And you saw the little caterpillar that crawled out. It's that time of the year. All a good sign of healthy biota down at the farm, in the soil and thereabouts. But I don't want it on my table. I want it in the soil. So we're going to give it a little salt sh soak there and we'll get back to cleaning the broccoli. Again, the potatoes. Well, sometimes... I like when David gives me the bigger ones, especially those that might be nearer to the top. In the heat, they will sometimes generate what I showed you a couple weeks ago. It's just called a star. So cut it so you can kind of get at it like you would a pear. It's a, it's a really um, fibrous portion that happens. It's not rotten. It's just what happens to potatoes. You don't see them in the grocery store because they call that notoriously shrink, as if it has no moral grounding in it. And it just means that for every bit of vegetable you buy at the grocery store, there's a ton of waste that you don't see that goes out the back door. Um, when you support a farmer and we use everything, we don't let things go to waste, then you're protecting farmland, you're getting better food for your family, and you learn how to manage produce. So, here's the star on that big one. And we're going to turn this into mashed potatoes for the casserole this week. It's all ready to go. And I like to steam mine. It's just easier because I can do 
three other things while they're cooking. And I, and I mash them right in the same pot. I take the colander out and dump them in and smash them up and then I won't put too much butter in them or anything like that this week because we have a gravy sauce going over the top of them. I think that's sufficient. So we'll finish this up and we will start assembling the veggie tots. about three-fourths of a cup of some leftover cheese. We don't often have cheese, but I think it was leftover from some other farm meal we cooked. Um, so I'm going to use it up. My friend Don, who has really perfected these, and even frozen them for lunches, will tell you they freeze okay. They're a little bit more moist when you reheat them. So take that into consideration. But she says definitely put cheese in them if you're making them for kids. There's a half a cup of finely minced onion. This is one of our carrots. I just very finely shredded it in the four eggs some garlic and the broccoli and I'm just going to mix it all together. This is pre breadcrumb because I want to see what it looks like first. See if it might need a little more egg. Feels a little wet to me. I think I'm going to put one more egg in there just to hold it together. I have a little bit of homemade breadcrumb in my pantry and then I always have a little bit of backup of the commercial stuff stashed in a corner somewhere. We just don't have a lot of bread in the house anymore. Um, and then this is smoked paprika. It can be a little hot and spicy so if that's not for your family don't use that. But a little sweet paprika is nice. And then the salt and the pepper. And I'm just going to mix those up. That coarser breadcrumb you see in there is the homemade stuff. The dust is the commercial. I guess they all have their place, huh? <laughs> for backup. So get it well mixed and that's what we're going to roll the veggie tops in. So I steamed those potatoes, put some butter in them. I didn't put any milk. I didn't have any in the house and I'm not too worried about moisture because there's going to be gravy on top of this. But I did put a little olive oil on the bottom of the casserole pan. And we'll put the sausage gravy on top of this once we get it made. And then the baked tater tot, uh, veggie tots on top of that. And it'll be ready to go in the oven. Now I did put salt and pepper in the potatoes. Fair to say I like to make them a little more moist. If I was making these with children, I would use the full cup and a half of breadcrumbs. But that's not how I like to eat them. I did add an extra egg, so there are five eggs in this. And then I just, whoops, toss them, pat them out, like so. So they're like little pads. Definitely put more breadcrumbs in the batter mixture if, you're, if kids are helping. So here's what our bowl of goodies made. And we're going to pop them in the oven. I've got the oven at 375 so that it's nice, the, the cool temperature of the tray won't take it down and I'll immediately lower it to 350 and keep the convection pan going. While we're waiting for the veggie tots to bake in the oven, I came back over to my huge basket of vegetables and I wanted to remind everyone, as soon as you get them home, take the tops off your beets and just put them together with your char. They're the same thing essentially. And I know the kids love to eat their carrots, uh, with the top on, but if they're not going to do that, that day you bring them home, take the tops off because this acts as a great so moisture sucking mechanism. And then for those of you who are brilliant and know how to use your carrot tops, they're spectacular this week. This isn't one of my favorite flavors, but I know other people have a palate for it and I applaud you. So there you go. But I just wanted to remind you, root vegetables need to come off their tops so that they keep better. And that way, if you don't have time to deal with these beets this week, just put them in a plastic bag and leave the bag just open a tiny bit and toss it in your vegetable drawer. Don't leave them on the countertop. And then I have one other thing I want to show you. Last week I told you that the beets were starting to accumulate in my vegetable bin and I had two sets of beets over a period of about three weeks. I cooked them up, skin on all, 
the method I've shown you before earlier this summer, and then you see the Chiogo beets and the dark red beets in here. And I use it's a refrigerator pickle. I'll post the vinegar salt sol sugar solution that they're bathing in, but they will last for well into the winter time. Um, so you can put them alongside a salad or a cabbage slaw, something bright. So again, they don't need to go to waste. You don't need to eat them right now. You can keep storing in your fridge, or you can really have food ready to go. And having a bright pickled beet alongside something rich in the wintertime is a big blessing. Um, but I will post the brine that these are in, so you can have them set aside. I want to show you, this is the sausage and a little bit of butter. I know that may seem crazy, but my home sausage is, is fairly lean. But also, I tucked in there that other half of onion that I had partially diced. You don't want it laying around, it'll just get bitter, and I think if you slow cook it in here, no one's going to know it's there, and it'll add all kinds of good prebiotics into your diet, because that's what alliums, onions are good for. So we'll come back to this one, it has a little more crisp on it, and then I'm going to add the flour and cook the flour and the fat, that's why we added that extra bit of butter, you could add olive oil. Um, and then we'll add the milk, thicken that up, adjust the salt and the pe black pepper, and then um, let it cool for just a few minutes and then we'll add it on top of the potatoes and by then the veggie tots ought to be out of the oven and we'll assemble the casserole. So Ken and I were looking at that sausage as it sizzled there in the pan and both of us agreed zucchini would go really nicely in there. No one's going to know it's there. It'll just add some more moisture and flavor. Um, and I had a few left over from last week that I hadn't gotten to. So I'm going to dice them up quite finely and saute them a little bit longer in that meat mixture until they look like they're dissolving. <laughs> and then I will make the gravy. So this will extend the length of time and cooking right now, but we'll get that many more vegetables tucked into it and these won't go to waste. So, see you back at the stove. So here's that meat mixture and it was just getting to the point where I was ready to add flour and I decided to add zucchini. So we are going to cook this down probably take about 10 or 15 minutes by the time it's completely melded into that. But look at all that extra vegetable you just added and fiber. So we'll let this cook for another 10 or 12 minutes and see what it looks like when we're done. So here are the tater tots all done. This could be a meal unto itself. You could have um, tzatziki, you could even make that cauliflower garlic sauce we taught you earlier to dip as a dip. Um, that's on the website too. Kids love ketchup, but I'm always trying to give them their palate a greater exposure to other flavors, especially if they're vegetable based. Um, and did I say tahini? Tahini would be a nice thing too. But we're going to go ahead and plop those on top of a casserole, just like the old fashioned tater tot casserole, only it's going to be Jubilee Farm style. We'll be back. So here's the zucchini after about seven, eight minutes of sauteing in with the, the meat and now all of a sudden we have twice as much volume and half of it's vegetables. So how fun is that? Um, at this point I'm going to go ahead and toss in the flour and cook that in the fat. Make sure there's enough fat in there to cook that because um, you want to toast the flour well when you're trying to make a roux. If I just put the milk in now it would taste like I don't know, nasty flour on your tongue when it's all said and done. So we're going to make sure that cooks for about five more minutes. Get all that flour well distributed and then we'll put the milk in, make the gravy, adjust the flavors, and then pour it over the casserole. Once you cook the flour in the meat mixture and you're convinced that it's been a good five minutes and it's well incorporated into the meat mixture, then you can start slowly adding the milk and then stir constantly until it's thick so you don't inadvertently burn a section of it. And I'm going to let it cool just a little bit before I put it on the casserole. So that's what it looks like when it's done. That's the viscosity of the gravy. You don't want it to look like wheat paste. And I'm going to take that off the heat and let it cool for a little bit before I put it on top of the mashed potatoes.
obviously, guys, this is going to feed a lot of people. <laughs> and a salad. Maybe um, you could take some roasted beets alongside this and some cauliflower that might be marinated in a nice bright vinaigrette. You're going to need something to offset all that rich calorie. So then, the next step is to remind Terry to put the oven back on because I inadvertently turned it off. And then you just take your tater tots and nest them in, like so. I want him to sit right on top because I don't want him to get gooey. It's kind of like a puzzle. There might be a couple left over for me. I'll yep. have to eat them. Ken will have to eat the leftovers just to even it up, you know. There we go. Okay. Voila. In the oven. That's going to go in the oven until the whole thing is bubbly. Now, I cook with a digital thermometer. So when this whole thing is bubbling at about 165 degrees, 170 degrees, down in deep in the potatoes, then it's done. So I have a sneaking suspicion Putting a little foil over this in the beginning is a good plan. I'm going to do that. Part of the fun of being in the kitchen for the summer rather than down the barn is I can show you all my little cheats. So these are pie shields that I use um, and I have foil on them. It's kind of puffed up a little bit so it doesn't ever touch the food but it allows me to reuse them multiple times until they get dirty and gooey. So that's what I use to top casseroles with. Holds it in place. So I've already checked the temperature of this casserole and it's 165 to 175 throughout. So that's hot enough and safe enough for me. Let's bring it out. I never did take these shields off and I think that was a good plan. But you can hear it sizzle. And that would feed an army. Now I would say you need some bright greens against that because that's rich, heavy farm food. <laughs> More than we're ever going to eat. We're going to share it around the neighborhood. <laughs> Have a great week everyone and remember be kind to your neighbors.